My name is Brian Sunnyvelt, and I'm an aerospace engineering student here at Arizona State University in my senior year. What I'm going to talk about is one of my projects, which was done through ASU NASA Space Grant. In the 2013 and 2014 school year, I was a NASA Space Grant intern. Now, I'm sitting in the Student Engineering Organization Warehouse at Arizona State University, and this portion is for Sun Devil Satellite Lab, which is the group that I'm a part of. If you pan around, you can see the rest of the area. I'm actually the Vice President for the student, the student Engineering Organization, Sun Devil Satellite Lab, SDSL. Now, this, once again, is a small satellite attitude control system test bed. So it's used to verify the attitude control system of a small satellite. If you look at this poster, this is what the full design is going to look like. What you see in front of me is not is only part of the way developed. You can pause the video if you'd like to get an overview of this project. If there's anything that I didn't explain in detail enough. If you come back to what's in front of me, what I'm going to get to eventually is this spherical air bearing. But I'll give a little background. So this is used to test and verify the attitude control system of a satellite. The attitude control system of a satellite is what's used to rotate it. Now I'm going to use this here as an example to demonstrate. This is the full scale size of a 3U cube set or a nano satellite. Now an attitude control system of any satellite is what's used to, to rotate the satellite or point it in a certain direction. Now, when something's in space, you don't have anything to push off of. Princess cars can rotate a wheel that pushes off the ground. It has some frictional force to push off of. When you're in space, you're just floating there. And so, one way that satellites rotate, or one form of an attitude control system, because there's many different methods, one of them is to use a reaction wheel, or use a set of reaction wheels, which operate on the concept of the conservation of angular momentum. So what happens if I have my satellite float in space, and I have a reaction wheel here, and if I rotate, this is connected to a motor, and if I rotate this reaction wheel this way, then this, the satellite itself will rotate the opposite way. And now if you have three reaction wheels, or at least three, all orthogonal to each other, then you can rotate that satellite in any direction that you want. Now if you want to make sure that this system works, you want to verify it before you send it into space because it's really hard to get to something in space and fix it. How are, you going to, how are you going to test that here on Earth? If you want to sit down on something and you want to test it, let's say you have one reaction in here on the top, and I want to see how it rotates about this axis. So I want to see how it rotates this way. Well, anytime I try and rotate it, I'm also battling that normal force from the friction between the satellite and the table here. And it's the same thing if I hold it in my hand. And so you want to create that frictionless environment of space where it's floating there and not battling anything that it's pressed up against or it's something that it's sitting on. So in order to do that, this is one method, which is an attitude control system test bed using a spherical air bearing. Now, you can see that if I put this on here and I try and rotate this, that it stops. I'll do it without the spacecraft itself, then it stops, doesn't go anywhere. And you want it to continuously rotate. Let's say you want to continuously rotate your spacecraft. Anytime I try and rotate this, I'm being battled against by this frictional force between these two pieces of metal. But when I put a little thin film of air between those, that's not the case. What I have here is an air compressor, pressure regulator, air inlet hose, and then just these two pieces of metal. I'll explain the design a little bit more too. Now if I turn this on, that inputs a thin film of air between those two pieces of metal and now it can rotate freely. So now you're not battling that frictional force. And the reason that this is important, that this was important to design for this project, is that they're very expensive. You can go buy one from a company that has them that are very precise. Spherical Air or Specialty Components and Nelson Air Corporation. It's able to companies you can get one this size for about three grand. Well, us lowly university students don't have three grand sitting around. We got to work with small amount of funds. 
So this is me using $18 worth of scrap metal from the Nystrom metal supply down the street. Now, this is not a, this is a, does not have a perfect airflow between these two structures. And so I'm working on a few other designs for it with multiple inlets. If you come in here close, this just has one single inlet. And so there's a difference in noise from when it's sitting straight up there and when it's on its side, which I'll show you right now. It gets a little bit quieter like that. It gets a little bit louder like that. So there are improvements to this design, but it was very, it was a big accomplishment to see that we could do this. We can machine this on a university level for, I mean, almost nothing compared to what you can get it online for. And new designs of this bearing to get a uniform flow of air at all orientations will not cost any more amount of money. It's just the machine that'll be different. It'll be the same price for that amount of metal. And so that was the advantage. That was the big step now in the design. Once again, there's still more to be done. We'll put our own reaction wheel attitude control system on here. Because what happens is when we actually test a satellite on this, this will not be connected to this in space. But in order to test it, we do have to connect it. So we have to counteract the moment of inertia of this tabletop itself. So we do that with our own reaction wheel attitude control system. Once again, those are just the next steps for the project. But in the meantime, it was nice to be able to save a few bucks from making our own sphere prepare bearing, which will also be improved with a few more new designs. Once again, my name is Brian Sunnyville. I'm an aerospace engineering student here at ASU in my senior year. This is my project.